Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, I just want to ask you one question. Do you believe this? The God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. That's Thomas Jefferson. Do you believe that? That's kind of an important question. In fact, that may be the only question that you need to answer in, in today's America because that'll answer health care. Uh, that'll, uh, that'll answer Copenhagen. Yeah, when you start calling it Hagen Doss, I'll start calling it Copenhagen. Uh, it'll answer all kinds of questions about the Constitution. Do you believe the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time? This hour, you decide. Hello, America. Glad you're here. Of course, I saw 60 Minutes last night. I'm a little afraid to answer the phone if he calls. Yes, it's still working. If the White House calls today, I'm a little upset. I'd hate to have... He gets a little testy when people question him. Did you notice? I swear to you, you keep questioning him, it's going to be like a mask is coming off. Maybe that's just me. Well, let's go to the private jet-flying limousine-riding hypocrites as they address the world's catastrophic warming in Copenhagen. Let me share with you what uh, Canada's national newspaper printed this weekend. It's the Financial Post. This is what they said about Copenhagen and everything that's going on there. Quote, the inconvenient truth overhanging in UN's Copenhagen conference is not that the climate is warming or cooling, but that humans are overpopulating the world. Well, if, it gets, if it's cooling, then maybe we can keep each other warm. As planetary law, such as China's one-child policy, is the only way to reverse the disastrous global birth rate currently, which is one million births every four days. Well, let me ask you something. That sounds like a really bad idea to me. How about you? This, by the way, is not some conspiracy notion. No, no. Press. Do your homework. Look it up. It's right there in print. It also happens to be the law of the most populous nation on Earth. This is so weird. China's already doing this. We're being bombarded with this climate change catastrophe hysteria every day. And now the only way to solve it? One child each. Well, that's a real solution for you. Stop having children. Okay, that's great. The global elite will be generous enough to allow us to have one child. One. <laughs> Put aside any of those, you know, religious overtones. Sure, those crazy sky god people who believe the Bible to be the word of God, it may seem like a direct contradiction to the multiply and replenish commandment, but those people are so stupid anyway. Oh, I know some of them watch this show. <laughs> they just watch for the pretty colors in the background. Now, if you're not religious, hey, congratulations. You're the upper crust, you know what I mean? Let's say you're not concerned about any of that. Well, good. <sighs> Can I ask you, where are the women screaming at the top of their lungs about reproductive rights? Do the rights only extend to eliminating children through abortion? Or would you like to hang on to that right to have a child as well? Or maybe two. Can a government tell you what to do with your body? Where's the favorite chant, you ass out of my uterus? I mean, not mine, but, you know, theirs. I don't have one. I haven't checked. Is that social justice? How come I don't have a uterus and half the population does? Just for good measure. How about freedom? Freedom for women, men, mothers, fathers, family. There is, of course, no provision that we could find today in the Constitution for this kind of intrusion into our lives. So you may be thinking, well, this will never happen. Really? Just like you thought, nobody would take over the banks. The stock market couldn't collapse. Marxist, communist in the White House, that could never. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the global steps being considered on a nearly daily basis now. Global taxes, global currency, global economic rules, global solutions to climate change. Global, global, global. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change yes. is through global governance and global agreements. 
Oh, there's nothing better than a global governance. <laughs> you know, I love that. Of course, this program we were laughed at and mocked when we pointed that the newly confirmed science czar, John Holdren, this guy, he's one of the guys hanging out in the White House. Hey, oh, let me tell you what, what we should do here. He advocated population control in 1977 in a book he co-authored titled Ecoscience. Among the techniques he considered were sterilants in the drinking water. <laughs> he also said maybe forced abortions would be good. You know, the kind that they have in China. Has he ever denounced these methods? No, no. He just stated that uh, the much worried about population explosion never happened. <laughs> he should read the Canadian newspapers. He said they didn't happen, so they weren't necessary. Well, good. I'm glad it wasn't something like, you know, you had an ethical problem with, you know, putting sterilants in drinking water. Well, now, once again, we're worried about population, apparently. The climate cultists are pushing their meat, uh, less meat, less heat mantra as well. So, fewer children and no meat. But let me ask you this. If we all have to eat carrots for the rest of our lives to save the planet, so be it, right? Not in your lifetime, Jack. You eat all the carrots you want. I'm eating the bunnies. After all... The nations are just trying to do something to save the planet in Copenhagen. Can't you do your part? Well, I wasn't totally convinced of these, uh, the uh, good intentions of all of those around the table in Copenhagen until I saw these guys. I love them. <laughs> There's the Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez and Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe. They all plan to address the negotiators in the international climate talks in Copenhagen or, uh, later this week. These guys think that there should be bigger sanctions on countries like ours. Shut up. Do they care about the planet that much? I mean, here's Ahmadinejad. Oh, look at the... Look at all the things he's busy with. He's, you know, denying Israel, you know, uh, a right to exist, drive them into the sea, vaporize them, you know. Denying that there are any homosexuals in his country when asked about it in Columbia uh, uh, University, you know, about the, the reported executions and stonings of homosexuals. He's busy prosecuting Iranians who speak out for freedom, you know, uh, causing even the U.N. to voice its concern about the increasing grave human rights violations in his country. He's so darn busy, you know, stoning homosexuals to death, but yet he finds it in his day to care about the planet. Oh, my. And then there's Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe. Oh, Look at the shape Zimbabwe's in. It's got hyperinflation. Oh, it's great. It's coming here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should listen to him. No, we really should. And don't get me even started on the credibility of Hugo Chavez. I've seen a Sean Penn movie before. If he's a friend of Sean Penn's, he's a friend of mine. So, let me ask you this question. Are you as convinced as I am that these fine, upstanding men, with their track records... They really want to save the planet and not just hurt the West with some ridiculous climate agreement. That's the furthest thing from their mind.